And so it begins. Two windows, two views. From one window, squalor. A dirty, wretched street. Narrow black houses round the back of nowhere. Nothingness. London, of course. The other, grand. High up. The wallpaper, the fantastic furniture. A high window looking out over Hyde Park. I imagine there, a young woman, always in the line of my eye, motionless. I try to assert her fullness, her left and right, her power to resolve. Yet, there are gaps, lapses, voids, and shadows. For she has caught this young woman between these two views. One, a golden cage, the other, much more under her skin, a dread, part of her flesh and fear, as if this destitute room is part of the street, and the wretched street and all it is is in this room. She must choose her view, and involved in her choice is a cost. Money, yes, but more than that, risk, the risk of losing everything. I'm glad you're so much better, Papa. Am I? That's why I called you. So you might see me as I am. You are as beautiful as ever, Papa. You're flourishing. Don't throw that at me again. Aunt Maud has made me a proposal. She wants to keep me. Of course. It is high time. She says we should understand each other. By which she means you must break off relationships with me. So here I am. What? I want to come and live with you, Papa. Here. My dear child, I'd never commit to that. She requires that I have nothing to do with you. Never see you, never speak to you, never come near. <laughs> never. That's her condition, but what are her promises? I'm a poor old ruin of a dad, but not quite the ruin not to get something for giving me up. I think her idea is that I should get a great deal. There is, in fact, my dear, a coach and four to be got out of me. If I agree to my aunt's condition, I shall carry it out. Of course. To the letter. The only way to play the game is to play. There's no limit to what your aunt can do. Oh, you mean in the way of marrying? To some duke or prince. So easy. Just like that. And that is where your aunt's proposal falls down. Isn't it? Well, who is he? Who is what? This man. What man? It's always easy to fall in love with some young man. I'm Merton Densha. I'm a writer. Most and your aunt me. knows. And for perfect reason, opposes this, this penniless. I suppose he's penniless. They always are. She wants me to choose. I choose. I wash my hands of her. I come and live with you. You're making me sick. If you can't pull yourself together, I will put you in a cab and deliver you back to Lancaster Gate myself. Papa! Now go, please. I'm sorry for her, deluded woman, if she builds on you. Oh, I, I shall go my own way as I see. You'll my marry a blackguard without a penny. He has every disposition to make the best of Then he you. must be an ass. Take it from me, I won't hear of anyone that your aunt won't. Papa, I am in a cage. A golden cage, yes. Does it not speak to you? It's matters of silk and velvet, of aspect and space. I thought so. How like me you really are. Of course, you understand. She won't let me see you for a long time. Why not say forever? I don't understand you. Nor I, my what dear. Your life. I've spent my life trying to discover. I'm like... Nothing. Men like me. If there'd been more of us, or... Perhaps we could have found each other. There's no knowing what we might have done. But it doesn't matter now. Goodbye, love. You'll do nothing 
for me. I've never intended to do more than my duty. And if I should defy you? I think that even reduced to insignificance, as you fondly believe me, I should not be without some way of making you regret it. Oh. <laughs> I defy you all. You, Papa, Aunt Maud. My cage to be seen, dressed, sold to the highest bidder. But what if, what if, at the edge of this cage, at the wall of the garden that I am caged within, I found, one day, a ladder, a place I climbed up, and what, what, what if, at that very same moment, a man, engaged in the same calculation at the same moment, climbed on the other side, confronted me face to face. We met at a gallery, a, a party. We looked at each other and we couldn't look away. We couldn't. Our um, minds, no more than that, our... I'm Merton Densha. I'm a writer, mostly for the newspaper. I'm... What? Surprised to meet someone like... Someone like... Someone what? so unlike anyone I ever imagined here. Within five minutes, something between us, something unalterably changed. And perhaps that, that would have been everything except happy has it. Six months later, on a train at Sloan Square. I was sure it was you before you sat down. Amongst all the others, I, out of the corner of my eye, the day and hour darkness felt as if I knew as if in a be bright there. stretch of death. And you waited for me to come. We looked at each other. We knew this was not for nothing. As we the train moved through High Street Kensington, Notting Hill Gate, it moved us so much further on. No words. You walked me home to Lancaster Gate and then walked me away again into the park. We meet always in the park, all our secret places. We can't go on, just... We've nowhere to go. We touch, our hands touch. That's all. My aunt knows. Of course she knows. But she doesn't speak of it. She holds it so... Lightly. I think Aunt Maud means to write to you. Why? <laughs> I can't spoil that. She thinks I'm a scoundrel, tempting you to terrible she things. She won't say that. That I'm not good enough. Not good enough for her. Oh, and that's necessary. She has behaved extraordinarily. So have we. To her, we're monstrous. But if she does send for you, what? you should know where you are. I know where I am. Do you? All I know is I must keep you, must make you completely my possession. I work you in with this life, this life that offers everything. I will have you, cherish you in my private thoughts and pay no price. We have no money, love. I have no money. It's not simple. I am in want of things. And things, these things, whatever they are, are are important, so important to them. I went to see my father. Why? To see if he would take me. He would not. How was he? Same. Perfectly manicured. Of course. And he continues? Yes. In all his dishonour. As all he ever is. All the unspeakable and unsayable that has washed him out of the world. No one ever speaks of it. No one ever. Of what he does. That's why he was so quick to get me to go. He wouldn't let you stay. Won't help me. Won't save me. Won't hold out a finger it to me. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to escape all this. Would you settle to our being married tomorrow? Let's wait and arrange and it. And that's love. You're afraid of my aunt too. Why are we always so cautious? Because we're beautiful. We must not do something base. As getting married with no money, no. If we can avoid stupidity, we should. And so you will sacrifice me? I will not sacrifice you. I shall keep you. And everyone. 
Meet my aunt. Go and see my aunt. I won't grovel. I can't. I won't lie down on my belly. I won't. I'll be patient. Diplomatic. Be. Don't give in. Don't be clever. Rely on my... You keep me waiting. You let me look at all this... All your signs and symbols. Yes, I have no show. Yes, I am here and I am in this cage with you. With no answer. I love her. That's all. I love the girl. Is that enough? And this house, your house, so rich, so ugly, so cruel, makes our love cheap. Mr. Densher. Mrs. Lauder. So you come to talk to me about my niece? Yes. She's the finest possible creature. I know that. Do you? Hmm. I think I know it better. I don't say that because she's my niece. That's nothing to me. I wouldn't have brought her here if I hadn't have found her to my taste. Kate's presence I marked early. Kate's presence, unlucky for you, is everything I wish. I have been keeping it for the comfort of my declining years. Am I likely to give it to any but the highest bidder? I can do the best with her. And your idea of the best isn't me? I didn't ask you to come to hear about what it isn't. I asked you to come to hear what it is. And that's very great indeed. I want to see her high up in the light. Hmm. A duke, perhaps? And so you're eager to smooth away any hitch? Hmm? I want her to marry a great man. That's all. Of course, I'm... I'm... I'm aware how little I can answer to any... You've a view. A grand one. I understand what I'm not. Thank you for not... You don't matter so much as you think. I'm not going to make you a martyr by banishing you. You're... Performances with Kate in the park are ridiculous as much as you think I don't know about them. I'd rather see you close up. You are, after all, delightful, Mr. Densher, in your own way. But I place you in the presence of my plan, for which you are incompatible. Come as near as you like. Walk round it. You can't hurt it. Live on with it. I never asked her for anything. What she sees in you. Everything. Because you're beautiful. All of it. You'll sacrifice me in the end. No. I will sacrifice nobody and nothing. And that's just my situation. That I want and try for everything. I will never give up. If I am the last word in this broken sentence of a family, I will have some kind of meaning. We wander in the park, not hiding, but hiding. Her aunt always watches. At least she consents to you now coming to see me. She's sure of my lack of means, that she has time. She believes in my... my having a certain amount of delicacy. In wanting to better my state before I... And put the pistol to my head. That gives her time. Strange. I think she half likes me. Oh, she never disparages culture or intellect. She adores writers. She wants you to be associated with her It name. must be a pang to her that I'm so desirable and yet so impossible. <laughs> anyway, she'll be glad. Why? I have to go away. What? I've been... Tell me. I'm going to New York. The paper wants me to... This idea of a series of... I don't know, letters, 
social point of view. I, I, I can't refuse. No, of course not. I'm not in any position. I don't want you to. I don't know why they asked me. Because you're clever. You look at the world differently. I, I want to do it. My own way. Unafraid. I haven't said yes. Not until I asked you. We are bound together. Always. You must go. All the things you might do. Your aunt will be relieved. I might languish in your exile. She relies on your alienation But if from you me. are not present, how will I ever get bored of you? I engage myself to you forever. I give you every drop of my life. She'll never agree. I ask her for nothing. I never put myself upon her. She must take her risks and she surely understands them. By your going away, we gain time. And so does she. There is no one yet she has in mind. Just us. Bound. That's everything. The joy of that. Our secret. Of us being as we are. If she asks if there is anything between us, I will say I love you as I shall never love anyone else. She can make of that what she will. Beef steak and oysters in a pie. <laughs> Boiled and somehow a bit burnt. My cabin's not as small as I expected. I can nearly stand up. I often stand out on the deck. At night, the boat rolls. I. It's easier. Sometimes the cold. It tears each breath. My heart gasps. I saw an orc. Looking up at me as if I were the spectacle, and it, it was the easiest thing in the world. It slid into the water. I wasn't sure if it, that I was just, I was dreaming. I was leaning over the rail half, and then it lifted its great tail so easy, so silently. I couldn't move. I never felt so alive. I. And it was gone. My love, you're so far from me. I don't mind being alone. I'm not afraid. I'm just bored. Bored of books. Bored of words. Bored of. It's like I'm waiting for something to happen, and it. it never does. I dream of New, New York. York is a big place and rapidly becoming an interesting one. It seems so poetic, so tender. I walk everywhere. London's so black and actual. It's a brute next to all this. Kate. Yes, Armwood. I think we'll have aperitifs here in the drawing room. Well, this room is so red. Yes, it's ferocious. That's why I like it. How do I look? How you always look. Which is? Like a lioness. <laughs> you shouldn't always say what you think, Kate. I don't. Do you miss Mr. Dencher now he's away? I try not to think of him. By which you mean you think of him all the time. It is hard to imagine him in another place. New York is vast. New York is startling. Such strange histories. Wild, cosmopolite generations. They account for everything. The immense extravagance. Their soirees. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm Merton Densher, and I'm desperately trying to find New York. I'm Millie Field. From New York. So, how do you crack this city open, Miss Thea? What have you tried so far, Mr. Densher? I... Uh, walk? Walk? Does that shock you? What did you find? I find I like... I like side streets. 
side streets? And that, that, that the, the stretch of Lower Fifth Avenue has a mild and melancholic glamour that I In love. In the summer after the crowds leave, you wouldn't believe how quiet it is. You know it. But you've been there. All the time. You walk. Always. I just... You don't think young American girls... I know few women who venture out. Alone? <laughs> Since there's no one anymore, no one in my family, I mean, left to object, I... I always loved the city around me. It's striking outwards. I like its edges, that it falls away. It's slow rumble. The deep beat of its heart. I feel that. Just... Just that it... It's... I don't know, still so open, so possible. London, it's... I am like an actor on a stage. Each day, I put on my costumes, reset my face. I never miss my mark or forget a line. I go over the same script. I play comic, ironic. I am pitch perfect. I know how to turn my head beautifully. I know all my best sides. I would like to show you London in the same way you have shown me New York, Miss How Steele. have I shown you New York? You've been in my drawing room a few times. The casual splendor of this room like a happy accident. Is it? I don't notice. None of it's for show. Oh, the heavy glories of the London drawing room, all strung up piece by piece. You should see it. It strangulates. And all the time, I long for my dressing room where I can strip back these adornments and lay myself bare. Susie? Millie? Are you still up? so quietly I didn't the young Englishman Mr. Densher he's gone San Francisco I think <laughs> such adventures Susie if I asked you what is it to go away with me to where Europe suddenly when this week this week no conditions <laughs> no design passage booked for Saturday. Would you come with me? Do I have to say now? Yes. Right now? Yes. I would have to. I would. I... <laughs> yes, I would. Although, what clothes I'll bring, I... I want to ask you something else, too. What is it? What did the doctor say to you? When? Last week when I was ill. Nothing. Nothing. How do you know I saw him? I was bad for 24 hours. It was natural you would speak. There's no secret. So there's no confidence between you? No. Why? Are you not well? I don't know. Are you in pain? No, but I wonder. What? If I shall have much of it. What? Pain? Everything. Of everything I have. You do have everything. But for how long? Are you ill? No, I... I don't think so. You can get the best doctor. I want to go to London. I realize just now, I know it's... It's frivolous, but I think I... I think I want people. That's what's been haunting me these last few days. New York is so familiar, so worn to me. I want human and personal and London. London, it's the place for that. You may see that same young man. Mr. Densher is away. He's away, and, and that's the end of it. By the time he returns, I'll be gone. You know, I have a possible tie. Who? A, a somebody, a someone in London. I don't like to presume I... An odd but interesting English girl. We, we had a friendship in the old days. I, I don't know. At my school, we... No letter. Three weeks. Your silence becomes a shrug that I am trying to shake off. Where are you, my oh, love? Oh, you've written another letter, Kate. 
You've still not heard from Mr. Densher? You know I have You not. may leave your letters on the hall table. You do not have to go out to post them. I like the walk. Strange enough, I have a letter from an American, and it rather intrigues me. I suppose that's what she means to do. What is it? Oh, an old school friend, Susan Stringham. She made a rather meagre marriage, and I lost her after lost that. Lost her? Well, you know, let her go. She lives in Boston, a provincial widow. She writes stories for ladies' magazines. I almost pity her. She's not coming Don't to visit, is she? She may have something to show. Don't make me meet her, She's travelling with a princess. A remarkable thing from New York. New York? New York history. Loss of parents, brothers, the lot, and beyond everything, by most accounts, a mass of money so piled on the girl's back. It may be you, Kate, can give this young New York princess the culture she craves. Me? I think that's why dear Susie writes to me. She knows I can serve up the whole of London on a platter. A great sight of an ocean. I am not afraid to look down the kingdom of the world spread out above and around. The sky stretching itself pure polar pink, the promise of it all before me. The deck throws me from the Hanging vertiginous, the tip of a wave, I cross to its edge. It impels me, I look down. The dizzy edge, I'm not dizzy, put out onto gulfs air. To slip, to slide, to leap one false moment. Imagine a descent marked by air falling precipitously. I recklessly meditate my unlimited possessions. No, I will not renounce them. Yet, I will not end. Escape a scurried leap. I will take the whole assault of life, the more complicated passage. I will live. London. I wanted people. I wanted life. Here it is. A dinner in a house, more than a house, a spectacular adorned. The people surrounding me, the, the air of this place, the pitch of the occasion. I hear so sharp a ring, so deep an undertone. Faces, the hands, the jewels of the women, the sounds of words Names across the, the table, shape of the fork, the arrangement of flowers, the servants, the walls, all touches in a picture, the notes in a play. The Lord sits by my side, detached, the light. I am in a state of vibration, it's too sharp. How did we find ourselves here? And where exactly are you? I'm not sure, Lord Mark. I know quite where I am at all. There's no such thing in London, I think, as saying where anybody is. Everybody is everywhere. Nobody's anything. Oh, this room, these people, look at them. All this talking, all this billows, masses of... All this trying to get. Get what? Oh, they don't know. Something. <laughs> and you? Me? Hmm. What do you want, Miss Thiel? Uh, my hope is to be lovely. Really? To meet Mrs. Lauder in the lovely way she has met us. Maud, lovely. <laughs> How so? Susie, my companion. Who? She who sits next to... Is Maud's former schoolmate. Oh, did they know each other well? They did. Recently? No, years ago. 
When they both got married, they yes, had... Maud made a great match. Susie moved to New England. Ah. And since then, they haven't seen each other. But one letter from Susie. Maud met us in her hotel. She invited us to dinner. She called with her niece, Kate Coy. I watch her across the table, out of the corner of my eye. This American princess. Hair exceptionally red, even for the real thing. Clothes remarkably black. Even for more. She has met us with magnificent fidelity. New York hair. New York history. Yeah, hasn't your companion? Loss of parents, brothers, sisters. Susie. All on a scale and sweet. Met more with equal fidelity. A mass of money so piled on that girl's back. Why? She has nothing to give. Except you. Me? Of course. Uh, I am a poor person. Possibilities. I don't feel as I. I have yet been given. If Maud has jumped at you, it's the same. To be seen, you must know, is to be jumped at. She isn't what I expected. No loud, robust American girl, none of that. Constantly pale, haggard, almost. Here you are. Look round the table. I think that you're from the top to the bottom being seen, being jumped at. You're Angular face, twenty-two. In spite of your marks, does Maud know much about me? Alone? No, she just likes us. I mean, you particularly, as your friend told Rich. her. Told her what? Everything. Strange. Ask her. Susie. Maud. Oh. With Maud, that is a liberty you can't take. But the pleasure of seeing what she does with you will teach me what she knows.、Mm. What does she know about you? <laughs> Nothing. What does she do with you? This. What? Turning me straight onto you. Because you are at the worst, the best she's got. Till you came, you're the best now. <sighs> you don't know yet, but this is nothing. You'll see everything. You can have everything. Why am I suddenly afraid? I want to turn this off. I want to leave London now. Get up from this place. Move out of this house. Down the grand front stoop without waiting for my coat. Keep walking out under that cold street. I feel the coldness on my skin like a shock of life. Keep walking. No running. I don't move. I do nothing. I have made up my mind. I give myself to this. So, what do you think Maud will do with me? She'll get back her money. Nobody here does anything for nothing. You know each other here as much as you know anything. <laughs> I suppose so. But there are things you don't know. Oh, intriguing. What does Kate Croy is sitting over there? What does she do all this for? What is her game? To gain your acquaintance, of course. What's that to her? She probably feels sorry for me. <laughs> Then I'm nowhere. Why would she feel sorry for you? Look at all this. Your success. But that's what she understands. That's why she pities me. All this to her is nothing. She's better than you. <laughs> She's beautiful. In character. Yes. You can tell that just by looking at her. Yes. Is she so? And then she looks at me. She turns her beautiful head, sees me, us, looking, looking at her. me. She knows it is her we talk of. I do not look away.、I、cannot look away. You are beautiful. You are so strange. You know you see through all. Do you see through all this? Oh, you must tell me about her. Haven't you seen her for yourself? No. With Kate, I've failed. It's no use. I don't make her out. I'd like to. You like her? <laughs> And now, at last, you say something true, Lord Mark. <laughs> yes. In some cases, break down. 
I give her up to you. What? A hat. I can't. Why not? What, what for? For nothing. For showing me London. For walking around with me for days, for weeks, around these dusty museums and staring up at monuments and sights. I know you hate sights. Looking at them with you makes them oddly unfamiliar. How so? Like I see them again. You and all your ideas and delights. You know I was afraid of you. Me? Before we... <sighs> the wondrous London girl. I've read about you in novels. I think I somehow uh, read of you. Just a nobody from Bayswater. It's my aunt you should be afraid Maud? of. Maud? It is she who keeps me in this cage. Such a beautiful cage. So comfortable, I sometimes forget it is. Okay. Is there no one else who can help you? No. Nobody. I envy you your freedom, Millie. And I envy you yours. Would you change places with me? Would you change chances? Your ease, your indifference. Rich as you are, I cannot hate you. Choose a hat. What color do you like for you? No, I, I I can't let go of mourning yet. And what can I give you in return? Nothing. There must be something. Tell me about Lord Mark. Oh, is that, is that your return? My interest is shamelessly human. What do I think of him? Well, it's difficult. So, we know people by what they show. Something that can be touched or, or proved, but Lord Mark, his value is so great, but what exactly is it? <laughs> he has no money, but he's a lord. I suppose it's his future. You think he's a humbug? He might do great things. Aunt Maud takes him seriously. She believes in him, so he's no humbug, but... He points to nothing? Well, that could be a sign of his real cleverness. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never indifferent. He is, after all, working our more for all she's worth, and she is in no doubt working him. And you? Does Aunt Maud believe in you? You may ask, what do I have to give? And that is just what I'm trying to learn. But she will get it. Whatever it is. All of it. Susie? Millie! I'm in here. Did you ride around the park? A couple of circuits. Maud's carriage is spectacular, of course. You? Hat shop. In the House of Commons. Mm. Miss Croy? Oh, didn't like any of the hats. I don't think she likes me very much. Yeah, she is brutal. I mean, not brutally brutal. She... Just knows what she likes. And isn't there a wild beauty in that? She has to move quickly. It's more dangerous here in London. Is it? Then we can have her dream of. And strange. Why strange? We were in the course of one of our circuits, and Maud mentioned that they knew that, that that young man, the one connected with the newspaper, the one you met in New York, Mr. Densha. The young Englishman in New York. <sighs> How surprising. He, they both know him. Maud and Kate. Now, Maud was interested in your knowing him, actually. Though, though, I ventured to tell her it hadn't been long enough as to make you friends. I don't know if I was right. About what? Have you heard of him from Miss Croy? Never. We haven't mentioned him. That you haven't, I understand. But that she hasn't. She said there was nobody that... I tell you all, when I tell you that Maud... Now, Maud 
asks me to suggest to you that it may be better not to speak of him, not to speak of him to Kate at all, unless she herself speaks speaks to you first. But Maud thinks she won't. There's something between them? No. But Maud's afraid of something. Or perhaps it would be correct to say she's afraid of she's everything. She's afraid of them liking each other. My dear child, we move in a labyrinth. I want a business. Well... Let us hope we shall sound the depths. But of course, Maud would like her niece to marry Lord Mark. Hasn't Kate told you that? No. She knows, of course. So that's what Maud would do with her? I believe Mr. Densha has no private means. Neither of you spoke of each other. Not you here in London. Is there no one else who can help you? No. Maybe. Nor he in New York. And yet his eyes have rested upon your face, and yours more beautifully looked into his. But he never mentioned you. And you never spoke of him. Your silence is a labyrinth, an edge of darkness, all that is never spoken. Why? But it will come out that he knows both of you when he comes back. I won't be here. Will you run away? I don't know. We could go away. We could go anywhere. Anywhere. In the world. I'll go with you. No. I cannot leave. I have lived all these years as if I were dead. I must try now to at least live. As if I'm alive. by piece, element on element. So here we are. Lord Mark brought us. Grand historic house, is this real? Beyond terrace and garden, summer fully flushed. Isn't this perfect, Millie? It is. It's like a painting. Yes. The color of the day. Old gold. You must make your home here. Make the most beautiful one in the world. And above all, you must help me with Kate. Ah, oh, here's Lord Mark. Millie, have you seen the picture in the house, the beautiful one that's so like you? I've, I've been through rooms and I've seen You're pictures. You're the image of a wonderful bronzino. Let me show you. May I borrow Millie? I think you already have. Your bronzino. The face of a young woman. Splendid. A face almost livid in hue. Handsome in sadness. Crowned with a mass of hair. Faded now. Your eyes of other days. Your wasted reds, you are dead. 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 I shall never be better than this. Than her? Do you need to be? But you are better. She is splendid, but is she good? That wasn't what I... I mean that everything this afternoon has been too beautiful. That perhaps it will never be so right again. Oh, we must talk about this. I don't quite see the resemblance. Her complexion is green, <laughs> but not as green. It's down to the hands. You mean her hands are large and mine larger? Mm. You go her all round. One better, in fact. <clears throat> but you are a pair, you must see it. How can one ever know oneself? So you've noticed too. The likeness is so great. There you are, Millie. If you want to know. And you are superb. Suddenly everything's... Everyone's too close. 
the pale face of my other shimmers, disappears. Millie? Get a glass of water. I'll find someone. Are you ill? I'm Merton Dexter. Is this how you look at him? You know him, but you never mention him. Millie? I think I need to sit down. Come to the window seat. Say his name out loud once. What is it? I won't blame you for not telling me. I won't hate you for your assert. Trust, trust me. Trust me. What is it? Will you do me a service, kid? Anything. No one must know. What is it? I, I need to see Sir Luke Strutt. Who? The greatest of medical lights. A doctor? Why? I have an appointment tomorrow, only I, I can't go alone, and I, I don't want Susie you to know. You want me to go with you. Susie's too good, and maid's not, not good enough. And I'm somewhere in between. Happy thought. What is she too good for? To be worried if it's nothing to be more worried. I mean, before she needs to be, if it, if it is something. What's wrong with you? I just, I want some knowledge. Just check. What? Oh, you'll laugh at me afterwards. I won't laugh. Someone who so universally dazzles. You don't think yourself seriously menace. That's what I want to find well, out. we can do that together. And I look up again at that pale personage on the wall. My sister of death. You already know. Everything. Is it out? Uh, home to come again. What did he say? Uh, not to worry. So he allows your... Ill? I don't know what he allows. How can he in a short hour? He can tell by looking at me. When I come back, he'll have thought me over a bit. When are we to come again? Now the ice is broken, I shall trouble you no more. You'll come alone? Don't mention this to anybody. You ask a great deal. So tell everybody then. Just tell me how you are. You see how I am. That's all. You'll come back with me in the carriage? Don't walk. Millie? No safety. Go on. All its lightness, its day after day. Now I am something quite different. I want to get lost. I don't care. I walk. I'm walk, the streets are grey, sharp, the air heavy, my mind flies, the world cuts into me. I knew, did I know some part of me? No cures, no cutting away. Start with the worst. He couldn't say it. I couldn't speak it out loud. <laughs> I'm dying. You can hardly look at me. Say it out loud. I'm dying. <laughs> it sounds so strange. I just started. I haven't seen anything. I haven't. You knew. Then why, if I'm dying, does life carve itself so sharp? My breath, the colors all around. Nobody knows where I am. I live. Now. I choose the way. Which corner, which street, how I go forward. This great gray city. You who demand... Your rent, and the rent for my future. I... I'm dying. 
will not pay. So there's nothing at all the matter? Nothing. I shall need a little watching, but I can, in fact, do what I like. <laughs> you can do as you like. Yes. Stay in London? Uh, no. Where then? I don't know. You must help me. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Here's Aunt Maud. She came up in the lift. How dress, Millie? Oh, I thought I might let you go on alone. The party will be disappointed. I can't climb the social stair this I'll evening. stay with her. Susie will go with you. Will I do? Well, my dear, you're better than nothing. Oh, it's so hot in here. Don't want the, the balcony, Kate. Says. Breathe some air. Where's the ornate shawl, Millie? Uh, it's in the wardrobe, I think. Susie tells me that you, in America, saw Mr. Densher. Uh, yes. I wonder if you'd mind, in connection to him, doing something for me. Which is? Name him. To Kate. I believe he's back. I, I can't hold out. Not against Aunt Maud, not against impatience. You've been traveling. You've been thinking too You much. know I've never named him to her. If I just break out now, well? I... Well? She might wonder why I've made a I mystery. I have nowhere to take you. Have you noticed She's that? She's never mentioned him. So, you see, it's she who has made the mystery. Today, I don't care who sees me. And tomorrow? Why don't you ask her yourself? We never speak of him. You disapprove of him? I disapprove of him for her. If I ask you to drive away with me now... She doesn't care for him. ...a light at my house now, come up the stairs, would you come with and me? And he cares? Too much. What can I do? Find out if they've met. Meet me tomorrow. If I try myself, it will seem like I think they're deceiving Where? me. And do you think they're I deceiving don't know. you? One of the museums. Kate is aware of my view for her. This is a mistake. But she remains to carry me. on like this to hide. As my views don't provide a place for Mr. Densher, as much as I like him. You like him? Yes. Of course. Don't you? I, I did. <sighs> Three times in New York. People may be very good, and yet not good enough for what one wants. When what one wants is something very good. You're so beautiful, even here. I love you. I will find a way. And there, you apply your oh-so-subtle sedative. Martin. It won't appease me. Waiting is a game for dupes. Maud, are you ready to go? Where's Kate? I'm here. We'll be back by ten, Millie. I thought they'd never go. Do you hear his name hung in the air? There is something different about I love this time of night. He's here, isn't he? With As you. The darkness rolls in. He's in life. London, right round the corner. You know. You see. You know, you shouldn't listen to Aunt Maud. What do you mean? I mean, what's she for? Her inscrutable nature and dreadful art. Well, she, she isn't anyone. She isn't anything. She isn't... You mustn't think... Oh, Millie, I can't let you. She's all calculation. My honest advice would be to drop us all as soon as she, you... We've not done anything for you. Yes, you The have. least thing worth speaking of. You're under no obligation. You won't want us next year. I will year. want you. We will only continue to want you. Susie has the best conscience in the world, but she's en enchanted with all this. You shouldn't take your people from but her. But without her, I shouldn't have you. You don't want me. I do. You don't know me. If I were you, if I... I... You should run. From this. From us. From the things we're capable what of. What things? 
anything. Everything. I'm not afraid. No. I wish I could make you. Why would you say such things? Because you're a dove. <sighs> I am a dove. And do you know what we do with doves? Aren't I? Piece by piece. Feather by feather. We tear you to pieces. The... You know each other. Yes, we were together last night. How? We met um, Maud Howells. <laughs> and uh, you two? New York. Oh, of course, New York. I called it Millie's Spectacular it's House. Very spectacular. And she told me what streets of New York were safe to walk. We are spending the morning together. I, I got back yesterday. He loves the National Gallery. Me too. You didn't know you were both coming here? No. It was just a spur of the moment. Uh, Sir Luke's coming to see Susie. I didn't want to be in the way. What for? Because I'm sick of talking about myself. <sighs> Mr. Densher, how were the rest of your travels? I went to the Rockies. Are you different from what you were? Bast. I never saw... You play your part. They were... And I'm lying. I'm scared of heights as well. You're being kind. The glaciers were... I... That's how I this... I wish then I was a this... photographer or you see... an artist or... Or An American girl. Words, words, That's all. Words. What words? You don't could... ask me for my adventures, not. How do you write that? Not down? realizing you... that this. How do you? Uh... That this us here. There's no words. What would you? This now. You. It's just it's it's immense. It's. <laughs> It was extraordinary to all meet like that. Kind of Kate and Mr. Densher to you watch You treated them beautifully. I told you that Kate can be charming she if she knew. wants to be. Knew what? She saw. That you were full of Lickstrat? She was so gentle and nice. Not like Kate, as if she wanted to help me through. She guesses that you're ill. But it doesn't matter. Don't worry. I'm not worrying. Millie. I don't ask you what he said. There are things I don't want to know. I will see him again and again. He told me I can help you. And that you must do as you like. <laughs> That's what he told me. But first, there must be things I like. You know her better than you said. Do I? In your letter, you said she was a new and amusing friend. How well, we all played our surprise. You knew I knew her. I knew she knew you. And she knew. What did she know? I think she thinks she knows about us. What do you think of her? I think there are many Miss Steels in New York. <laughs> no. You're wrong. She's extraordinary. Does Maud know I'm back? Not from me. I'll speak to her now. You need to go and see her. She likes you. Maud? Millie. Why can you not take me as I am? More than likes you. Do you love me? Go and see her. Who? Millie. It will help us. How? By helping us to go on. And and and, and what basis do I see her? I don't mind. What are you thinking? Go to see her. Why? I'll meet you there. I don't understand. She doesn't know I care for you. I thought you were friends. You haven't told her about We us. haven't even spoken of Never. You. Strange to your glory, never. But Maud would have. Of you, but not of me. Millie knows you're mad about me. I don't show it. You can choose that, can you? Not where you are concerned, but 
It'll make a difference if she thinks... Thinks what? It's getting late. Get me a cab. It always ends like this, doesn't it? Separation. Taxi! My aunt will invite you. Go and see Millie. You mean you'll be there? You won't give us privacy? You'll see. If Millie believes that somehow you hate me... I will hate you if you've spoiled the beauty of what I begin to see. Lancaster Gate. Drive on. There are no lies. I come to visit a friend. I like her. We met in New York before any of this, before they tell the lies. They. How are you? Um, as you see me, please. Uh, so, tell me about the rest of your trip. No, I've overdone it. <laughs> tell me about London. Do you remember you warned me? Did I? Mm-hmm. London's complicated. Blood prince? No one says what they really think. Or tells you which way not to. Do you ever get tired of all the... Complications? complications. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do. Um, tea? <laughs> Even that sounds... I love tea. <laughs> <laughs> so what becomes of you after? We go to Venice. You'll come back? Mm -hmm. When the wind turns. Mm -hmm. What if the rest of your summer? <sighs> Work. Ink. But you'll... You will r return... If I do, I will come back for Kate. I'm in her hands. Well, don't let her bully you. <laughs> you call it bully? What she does? Sometimes I don't feel as if I know her enough to understand what she really does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I, uh... What? Oh, no. Say it. Would you come for a drive with me? I'm not, I'm not allowed to ask you that, am I? Sorry, sorry. No, 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 I... Don't be sorry, you're allowed to ask. You, you have other things. No, I, I would very much like to go for a drive it with you. It's so ridiculous now. Let's go. Uh, I'll, I'll get my thing. Kate wouldn't have done that, would she? No, she has done it. Things, things like it. You are so free, Millie. But not advanced. Whereas Kate is so constrained and yet advanced to a high degree. So you did come to see her? Um, isn't that what you wanted? Where's Millie? Come to get ready for a drive. You're going with her? With your approval. Mm. My approval's complete. I don't think I'll wait. I swear that you love me. Here, yeah. there's nothing between us here. Isn't there? <gasps> look, look, tell her, finding you with her, I wouldn't wait. She'll understand. Was, was that Kate? Uh, yes. She's gone. She didn't know she'd find me here. I'm sorry. Don't be. We don't have to. L let's go. And yet your face is changed. You love her, but... She refuses. And so all the doors swing open. I am suddenly invited for the evening to Lancaster Gate. A soiree. I don't know what for. Miller will be there. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed for me. I love the girl. I love Kate. I... That's all. Mr. Densher. Good evening. Do be at ease to sit. We're going to have the most intimate evening. Our American friends, you know. Yes, indeed. Good evening, Mr. Densher. 
Good evening, Miss Croy. Here's Millie. I need to speak to her. Where's Millie? I'm afraid she's not well enough. Millie's not coming. Susie, what's the matter? Let's go into the drawing room. Millie's not coming. Are we allowed to speak with each other? She won't leave us for long. Is she ill? Tonight, no. But is she ill? Her doctor says the greatest thing for her is to be happy. Well, that is surely the greatest thing for everybody. But what if she can't be? She must be. She will be. They're supposed to be leaving town, but they've pulled since you... Don't be ridiculous. She doesn't know whether she'll see you again. The future has opened up a dark, confused thing. I thought she was this great success. There's a shadow. What shadow? She sees Sir Luke Strett. The famous doctor. It isn't the case she first supposed. You've made Millie change her mind. It's another. Examining her for what she's supposed. He found something else. She's scared. She has so much to lose. She wants more. What do you think of she Mr. She can't Denisha? have everything. I like him. If you can imagine an angel with a thumping bank account, it, it's open to her to make a great... She won't be marriage. magnificent if she marries him. But isn't it magnificent to marry someone you like? I shouldn't get her if she hadn't so much. <sighs> Did you really just say that? I... I shouldn't trouble with her, except she has nothing. She must have everything. She does love life. To meet someone like you. Me? The way she looked at you. Then she's a fool. To love so freely. Yes. And she makes no arrangements. You handle everyone. Not like you. I don't handle Kate. I use what I have. You're what's most precious, and you're therefore what I use most. You mean Kate cares for him? Kate thinks she cares, but she's mistaken. Deny to Millie that she so much as thinks she does. I believe that if she's ill, she's really ill. She'll really live or she'll really die. She doesn't want people to know. I don't know. It's intensity of pride. It's a pity he isn't better. Well, if he were better, you would like him for your niece. Oh, I, I don't like him for Kate. I like him for myself. So you want me to make up to a sick girl? Plenty others will. Others are free. So are you, my dear. You always have some way to meet me. How could I look at another woman? You draw me out. I exist in you. Don't fail me, it would kill me. Mr. Densher, come drink coffee with me. Kate, show Susie my new tapestry. I've hung it, but I'm not sure it's the right situation. So, you will go and see our little friend again. She's leaving town, isn't she? We shall go with them. To Venice. Then I, I won't see her at all. You'll come out to us. Millie has taken a palazzo on the Grand Canal. I'll write to you. Thank you. This could be the occasion of your life. Do not lose it. I can smooth your path. Her fortune is a real fortune. I'm obliged to you for the handsome offer. Of what doesn't belong to me. But there's no reason it shouldn't to you. I've told a lie for you. What lie? The proper one. You've told her that Kate doesn't love me, haven't you? Now I depend on you to make it right. <laughs>